Till he got a head for height. I wonder yeah. where he parked his sleigh. I don't know. Brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant, Alex. Really good. Let's keep the festive feeling going and take a trip to Merseyside, where Simon Crabtree is doing some last-minute shopping at Liverpool's club shop. Yes. Simon, what treasures have you managed to find? That's what we want to know. Yeah, well, as you can imagine, they're, it, they're absolutely loads in here. But these ones that you can see now, all these signed treasures, you can buy them no matter where you are living in the world. So we've got great stuff from signed by Jamie Carragher, from Steven Gerrard, uh, Gary Mack, Robbie Fowler, Bruce Scrublob. And I look at this one, the all-time Liverpool League leading goal scorer, personally signed by Ian Rush. If you go online, you can buy it for yourself. It really doesn't get any better than that, does it? Yes, it does, because the man himself is right here. In season's greetings and everything that goes with it, it's been some 2020 for Liverpool, hasn't it? Oh, it's been absolutely fantastic. You know, everyone's had difficult times and everything, but I think football, especially if you're a Liverpool supporter, is, um, is makes it a, a little bit special because it's been so long since they won the league. But it's, uh, you know, it's been uh, been up and down season. <laughs> That's the understatement, I think, of 2020, <laughs> isn't it? You, you were part of that team that won it last time 30 years ago. When Jordan lifted the trophy, did it, did it bring back memories for you? What did it do emotionally? Oh, very emotional. I was actually here when I was lucky enough to be here, so it was um, so emotional and everything. Uh, to think, you know, 30 years since Liverpool lifted the trophy, uh, if you asked me 30 years ago, I would have just laughed at you and said that. But uh, that was the case. And... Each year seems to be getting harder and harder, and, um, but I think um, we eventually got it in the end. I thought the Premier League done an excellent job to, to get the league up and running again, and uh, well, fortunately for us, in the end, we got, we got over the line. As far as this season is concerned, injuries have sort of have, have played a little part, haven't they? Certainly with, with Virgil, that, that felt massive. Does it feel like they're almost through that now? Well, I think when people look at it, when people get injured, it gives someone else a chance. And I think what's happened uh, with Liverpool uh, this season, I think the academy, uh, well, I was going to say kids, but they're men now, yeah. you know, uh, the academy, uh, they rose to the occasion. And I think it's been absolutely fantastic. And I think we've got a stronger squad now because of the academy lads coming through. And uh, imagine when everyone is fit and all that, and then we'll have a stronger squad. But uh, yeah, I think we're, we're getting through it. You know, we're top of the league. Uh, so. Uh, Maybe, you know, I would have thought 100% we would miss Van Dijk straight away you know, because he's most probably the best world-class player in the world. But we've got away with it, you know, because the, everyone's come in and done a job. And I think um, that's a lot to do with uh, how well um, the lads have come from the academy. And you say academy lads, that on top of that as well, they're mostly local lads as well. And from someone, I appreciate you were born here in North yeah. Wales, but your heart, I think, was always on Merseyside. I won't go into too many details <laughs> about which side of the park. But does it make it more special, for the fans at least, that you see in the Curtis Jones of this world, who are Scousers? It's 100%. You know, when I got into the team, it was Phil Thompson, Sammy Lee, Terry McDermott. You know, and uh, more recently, when you look at you now Stephen Gerrard, you know, Jamie Carragher, you look at it like that. And I think the fans, especially the younger generation, they're looking for maybe a scouser to come through and all that. And you know, Curtis Jones is doing an incredible job. And you know, there's more, you know, Trent's there as well. So we're looking at a team where, when we look at the academy, when it comes through with Gerrard's, Owens, you know, Carragher's and all that. And maybe we've got another, another batch here that can maybe even better that. At the front, I've got to ask, the I mean, you're the club's leading goal scorer. You've mm. got three, if we had Jota in there, I yeah. suppose it's four. If we had Divock in there, who comes on? There's plenty mm. of strikers. But the front three that we're used to, mm. how do you rate them? Well, they're the best, they're the best in the world, in my opinion. You know, they're three of them, and they're all different, but they play so well together. And I call it, I, what I say is that every one of them's got like a football brain because they can play in the middle, the right and the left and wherever the gap is, where the other two maybe defenders are marking, the third one will get into that space. And it's so, so difficult to defend against. You know, it's absolutely impossible sometimes when, and them three are on fire, you know, but one thing's for certain, Liverpool will score goals. Would you like to have played in that? Three. Well, if I was if I was playing now, where uh, I would say to Jurgen Klopp, make it a uh, top four. Because, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, maybe more difficult in the midfielders and on defenders. But uh, yeah, they, they're absolutely. Uh, and I say the different sorts of players as well. Yeah, they are. So just finally then, and thanks again for this, it's really appreciated. 2021, just around the corner. We hope on many levels that things get better for everybody around the world watching this. But as far as on the pitch, is concerned. What's 2021 bringing for Liverpool? 
Well, again, no, hopefully uh, more trophies. You know, I think we always got taught the hardest thing is winning the, the league. The, well, the easiest thing is winning it. The hardest thing is retaining it. Right. And, that's, and that is so true as well, because I think this year, everyone wants to beat Liverpool. They are the team to beat. They have set the standards. Now, I think a few years ago, Manchester United raised the, the bar and Liverpool have done that. And uh, everyone wants to beat Liverpool now, but we're rising to the occasion. And I think it's going to be a really interesting league. It's, the league, it could go down to the final game or two. That's how tight and that's how the English Premier League is the best league in the world. And it's as simple as that. And uh, I think it's going to be one hell of a, <laughs> hell of a title race this year. But you know, we're on top now. So uh, I think uh, Liverpool have to lose it. And I think uh, with the squad that they've got and the players coming back from injury and all that, if they can keep that going, you know, uh, Liverpool again will be the team to beat. And I'm looking forward to more trophies. Brilliant. Good stuff. Thanks, Ian, as always. It's a, a, an honour and a pleasure to talk to you, he says fawningly. But, uh, but it is true. It, it's great for Liverpool fans and they'll be hoping yet again for a, a great Christmas period. Plenty of matches to come. They're already eight points clear of Manchester City. They'll be working through the gears and, as Ian says, they'll be hoping for an even better 2021. Yeah, well, it's exciting that the Premier League is kind of open this season, but Liverpool definitely the team to be, right? Hashtag PL fans. We've been asking you on social media about Arsenal. What's going wrong? How do you fix it? Let's get to these. So Dennis has put, Arsenal is probably done for this season. Arteta should focus on not getting relegated and hope for something better next season because the 26th is going to be a nightmare. That is obviously referring to the game against Chelsea on Boxing Day. But yeah, I think... Arsenal fans would never have predicted a bottom half of the table at Christmas, 15th in the table. I mean, only a point behind Burnley. What, four points below the drop? Yeah, Above exactly. Drop. And what's going wrong? Andrew says uh, Arsenal need a good leader like Jurgen Klopp. That was exactly mm. what Neil was saying earlier. They're missing those leaders uh, in the side. Uh, Sean David Lowe has put, as a Man United fan, I'm speechless to see Arsenal worst start of the season. I believe Arsenal will buy players in the January transfer window and challenge for the top four, trust me. So there's some hope there. We'll there see is. Thanks very much uh, for sending those in. We will see you soon, very soon, on 20 and 20, a little bit later. A thousand tons, which is more than 300 elephants. As you can see, a typical winter's day here on the south coast. Gloomy and grey, a bit like the situation at Brighton Football Club at the moment. We're on our way down, and that's exactly what Graham Potter will be hoping to avoid. Here with me to discuss what's going on at Brighton at the moment is sports reporter at the Argus, a local paper here, Brian Owen. Brian, tell me, they had two winnable fixtures, didn't they? Sheffield United and Fulham. Two points from both those games. Now they find themselves just two points above the relegation zone. Yeah, and I think the Sheffield United game particularly concerning, the home form concerning. It's one home league win throughout 2020 against Arsenal in the restart fixtures. They've got one more chance to win. That's also against Arsenal. Uh, they're one game short of the club record for home league games in succession without a win, and that was set when they were in exile at Gillingham. Um, perhaps unfair to talk about such records because they have been playing most of this time without their fans. They've now had 2,000 in for the last couple of games. They've had some tough fixtures in that run. Man United twice, Liverpool twice, Man City, Chelsea, Southampton, who are obviously doing really well. But they have had some opportunities, and I think Sheffield United is the one we're still sort of thinking about now. Not looking good for Sheffield United, but worrying the other teams around the bottom, the likes of Fulham and Burnley, yeah. look to be on the way up. How concerning is that for Brighton? Yeah, of course. I mean, you expect Premier League teams to have some sort of reaction. Rather ironic that Brighton was sent down a place in the table by Burnley and their two former Brighton strikers, Chris Wood and Ashley Barnes. I think it's Brighton taking care of what they, they need to do. They're doing some good things. They're creating chances. Um, they're playing good football. There's plenty to still be hopeful and optimistic about, but they need those home wins and they need to take chances. And looking at that squad, who's going to be key to survival this season? Well, well who can put the ball in the net, really? I mean, we saw Danny Welbeck do it very well against Sheffield United. Even he's had chances which haven't been taken. Plenty of players have had chances. Adam Lallana creates so much. He's going to be key. Um, and also the defenders, of course, people like Ben White, Lewis Dunk. So that the strikers don't have too much to do. One player you haven't mentioned, actually the fastest yeah. player in the Premier League this season, recorded at a speed of 36.6 kilometres an hour. Guess who? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course, Tarek Lamptey. A special anniversary coming up for him. He made his debut in the Premier League on the final weekend of last year for Chelsea as a game-changing sub, actually, at Arsenal. 
can he celebrate against Arsenal on the final weekend of this year? We will see. But he, he brings so much and he makes the team play, helps them set up in a certain way. So, so important. Brian, great to speak to you. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. We have one final festive surprise for you. Two very special guests waiting here. Santa and his helper. Santa, tell me, what do you want for Christmas this year? Three points for Brighton. Will Santa's wish come true on Sunday when Brighton take on West Ham at the London Stadium?